Good evening. Uh, welcome you all to this November 3rd meeting of the Paducah Planning and Zoning Commission. And I ask that you rise with us and repeat the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Summers, we call the roll, please. Mr. Benberry? Here. Mr. Bradford? Here. Mr. Morrison? Here. Ms. Schramke? Here. Mr. Shadle? Here. Mr. Wade? Here. Chair Cresilius? Here. Uh, Mr. Morrison, I believe you have the uh, minutes motion. Yes, ma'am. I move that the reading of the minutes for October 6, 2014 be waived and that the minutes of said meeting, as prepared by the secretary, be approved as written. Second. Second by Wade. I would uh, note that there is a correction for the listing of the absence of Vice Chair Schramke, uh, but that was included in the minutes we were sent out. So. And any questions? Any more changes? Call the roll, please. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Mr. Shadle? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Benberry? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Chair Cressy? Aye. Our first item of business is the SBA Communications Public Hearing. Ms. Schramke? I move that this commission receive and file the application of SBA Communications, Inc. for approval of a proposed 195-foot monopole telecommunications tower located at 158 County Park Road. I further move that the requested approval be given in compliance with all other applicable provisions of the Paducah Zoning Ordinance. Second. Second by Benberry. We have a presentation. Good evening. Uh, my name is Belinda Bodie. My address is uh, 1022 Highland Colony Parkway, Ridgeland, Mississippi, 39157. Um, just want to tell you a little bit about our proposal. Um, SBA does have this proposal before you. Uh, they are constructing the structure. The actual tenant that will be on the tower will be Verizon Wireless. And uh, the reason for this uh, request is Verizon uh, is looking for a location uh, kind of further this way down Hinkleville Road to actually offload. They have a capacity problem with their existing site uh, called Paducah Mall, which uh, uh, if y'all are familiar with is actually up there by the interstate over by the hotels on, uh, I want to go Colony Crossing, but that's not right. Omen. Yeah, uh, over there, and that's where Verizon is. They currently are at, and they'll stay there, um, but they just need something kind of coming this way down Hinkleville Road to help with all the users that they have in that area. And actually, I don't know if any of y'all have uh, Verizon phones. My work phone happens to be Verizon. Um, as I was coming toward the meeting and I got to County Park Road and Stuart Nelson, I noticed my bars. I could tell the in-building and in-car coverage in that area it definitely subsided once I got a, uh, a little bit further away from their existing site. Um, I did, uh, well, at, at the time, had one phone call from uh, one landowner, Mr. Val. He has a Val insurance agency over there. Um, and his concern was he just wanted to make sure that we did not interfere with his uh, wireless Internet, which I told him we'd, we would not. And when I told him who the carrier was going to be, he was, he was quite pleased. Uh, he said that's who his service was, and he said he couldn't even use his phones at his office. So um, I do believe I addressed his concerns. I told him if he had anything else to please call me back, but I haven't heard from him. But... Uh, um, like I said, we did we did speak kind of at length about uh, the need for the site there and just assuring him that we would not interfere with his uh, wireless internet. And uh, I'll be happy to address any questions that you may have. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. I see this is 190 feet, 95 feet. Yes, ma'am. Are there different heights for different towers? Is this standard or? Um, there are different heights, but that's usually dictated by what the uh, carriers need. And in this case, in order to kind of connect with the existing site over there, they're roughly at right at 200 feet there. But the, the heights vary depending on what the carrier's needs are. Um, so, I mean, you, I've built them as low as 100 feet in very heavily dense urban areas mm -hmm. up to, you know, 350 feet in very uh, rural areas. So... Um, but typically, for a tower that we're requesting a monopole, they usually go up only to about 200 feet. And how much is the other? Uh, how tall is the other one that you refer? Uh, just a second, and I can tell you that one is a self-support. And let me tell you, let me. 
on the map here. <clears throat> that site is actually just under 200 feet at 199 feet. When will that be up and running? I'm sorry. When will that be up and running? Uh, of course, we still have to get our waiver of subdivision, which I believe is possibly in two weeks, yes, if, if the uh, surveyor uh, gets the, uh, the plat done. Um, and then, of course, the building permit. Honestly, I would suspect probably for them to begin construction first quarter of next year, just given with winter coming on, and you never know what the season will be, but definitely after the first of the year. I noticed the same thing you, you mentioned there about twice that happened to me twice too today mm -hmm. now will this monopole be available for other carriers uh yes ma'am um i don't know if you had a chance to look at the uh the drawings that we submitted but it is available it has slots for at least three additional carriers on the tower All right mm -hmm. and i noticed that you sent letters out to the surrounding People, did you have any responses back on that? I, other than the phone call, or the actually, you received the email and forwarded it to me from Mr. Val. That's the only contact I had. But I believe you said you had one other phone call today. I got a call from uh, Miss Hall today. She might, she might be here, <laughs> but um, question was about ingress and egress, and I told her it was going to be off County Park Road, not Stuart Nelson, where her house is at, her business is at. Mm -hmm. Right. And that seemed to quite any fears that she had it was the only comment the other question I have has to do with Barclay Regional Airport I know that you've sent them a letter have you had any input it's probably just letting them know the right. height of the pole uh, is probably point, not going to be anything no um, I have not heard back from them I did like you said send the letter and also to the uh, Kentucky Airport Commission now the Airport Commission said that they were fine with it and they did not have to issue any approvals because it was under uh, 200 feet but no I have not heard back um, f directly from the airport but they also will get noticed through the uh, our FAA filings so and to my knowledge we've had no negative feedback from them as well does anyone else have any questions to ask I don't know if it's of any concern to anyone there were several things that were kind of will be added when we receive them yeah it, yeah it, it, some of that yes and some of it has actually been provided that was in that second packet that was right. separate from that yeah and I've kind of let SBA no don't make me do that again mm -hmm. <laughs> make sure that I have everything complete um, I don't like submitting incomplete but when uh, when their <coughs> client is very forceful <laughs> unfortunately I had to kind of say okay I'll, I'll do it and probably get my hand slapped in the process but well the only one I was a little concerned was the survey of the property seems pretty which has been provided Isn't and then front? yeah and then we'll uh, get the um, the plat uh, Thank you. in two weeks yes do you have a comment if you did please come come up and, and speak Give us your name and your address, please. Hey, my name is Marshall Green, 161 Stuart Nelson Park Road. Okay, we're the only, re we're the only resident that lives in that neighborhood. Will it re affect us in any way as far as the zoning? No, not zoning-wise, but do you have any other questions? Health-wise? Frequency. Frequent, I, uh, uh, no, um, actually, it won't. We're, we're strictly regulated, and the federal government really takes a hard stance on that, so make sure that we comply with all their uh, emissions requirements. But really, the emissions are actually less than your microwave in your home. So, no, you won't have any effects there. And I believe she addressed we are not changing the zoning or anything of the property or any of the property around it. All right. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Any other questions? Roll all, please. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Mr. Shadle? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Benberry? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Chair Cresilius? Aye. Mr. Shadow, I believe you have the next item of business, ophthalmology group. Yes. 
I move that this commission approve the location of the ingress egress of the ophthalmology group as shown on the site plan dated August 4th, 2014. Second. Second by Schramke. If I could uh, bring the mission back up to speed, especially for Mr. Bradford, who wasn't here in uh, July of last year. A motion was made uh, as part of the rezoning for this property from R1 to R4 to review the ingress egress at the time. Uh, this is the new um, site plan that we have in, and it's across from Colonial Drive. Uh, the minimum uh, would be 30 feet, and they have more than that. We was out there today. Uh, it's at least eight to ten seconds for cars to get where they turn on the con, and the speed limit's 35 miles an hour. Eight to ten, you said? Mm-hmm. That is directly across from Colonial? Yes. Okay, so there's just one in this? this. Well, and on Pecan Court on the right hand side, but that's for their employee parking. Okay. Jack, anything to, to add? I don't know if there's anything to add really, but uh, uh, I'll answer any questions. I know on the right-hand side, that <coughs> portion of road has got the guardrail, one with the, uh, the old pecan drive. Where at? The old pecan, right-hand side, about midway up that road is the guardrail. Here? Yes. Um, well, they're only going to have eight. Right. I, I just want to, we're never going to open this road up. No, not to my knowledge. Not to our knowledge. The way it's designed. What's right. going here looks like it's even closed off even more, and that's. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's no, off, no access off of old pecan mm -hmm. other than the new cul de sac that was put in for pecan court, I guess. Mm -hmm. okay. And what all is out Colonial Drive? Is there much traffic that comes down that road? All residential, oh, pretty yeah. much. Or single family homes, primarily. There is some access, I believe, to go around to um, Lindbergh Court, I believe. Just looking for here to be able to do employee park on back in. This is the primary entrance, would be. Okay, there's another road on down here, and I was thinking of way back around here. Yeah. So property yeah. And get back to Westvale. What? Does that end up taking you back to Westvale? Uh, it takes you to what's the name of that hill? Westvale's off um, Hillcrest or Hill something. Spring. Okay, it's another yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, another one over. That goes back to, I believe it's Lundberg. Oh, I've moved it here. Uh, okay. That's right, because this used to come all the way out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just for information's sake, what monument is laying on its side? It says monument disturbed laying on its side on 62. Uh, that was that's a right of way monument. The concrete post you see along highways, but but well, it depends on if you're urban or rural. But they stick up about that far. It's about oh, okay. four inches square. I mean, I'm thinking monument. You know, something no. like historical. <laughs> it's not historical. No, it's a it's a right of way marker. <laughs> the concern at the public hearing on this was which I wasn't here, but via YouTube, I was able to, to look at some of the comments from the public hearing, and some of the residents showed up to express concern about the turn lanes and the traffic being too dense right there, being that close to 62. And 
I assume from the staff recommendation that those traffic concerns are not. Uh, that is correct. Uh, today, when I was on, out on site, uh, we timed the cars mainly going west on 62 and turning right onto Pecan. As soon as we saw the cars turn right there, generally the timing was between 8 and 15 seconds, depending upon the driver. A majority of them were around 10 to 11 seconds. Actually, with the entrance being pulled about 100 feet closer to US 62, you actually had better sight distances slightly than you had before because you're not so far around the curve, and you have a direct sight distance or, or sight lines to the actual intersection where the person turning right is. Right, right is. So, um, in my in my opinion, uh, the situation is actually better, even though you're 100 foot closer to US 62. You're still over 320 feet or so from that intersection to this. And typically, in the city on urban sections, we like uh, uh, access points to be you know approximately 200 feet or so. Obviously, we have a lot that are a lot closer, but 200 feet is optimum. Here are about 320 feet, I think. Have you all heard anything else from any of the residents around that area? No, not in a while. Okay. I'm wondering if at some point there could be, um, if there is, uh, if a problem develops, we don't know that a problem will develop, but if it did, any kind of um, uh, slow, uh, you know, hidden entrance or something like that. Not that the entrance is going to be hidden because certainly on that hill you can see it. I don't anticipate any problems, but if there was, certainly uh, through the Engineering Public Works Department, they could study the traffic situation there and see if any other type of traffic devices need to be installed or not. <clears throat> the second one for the employees when they're making a left to get out is the revisible. Yeah, I, I would, honestly didn't even go down and check that one out as it was further down Pecan. Actually, I think it's more visible than the main entrance. The main entrance is on a hill, and that's the primary reason is because of the curve. But as you said, moving closer. It flattens out quite a bit from there up to the intersection also. Right. As it gets down to the other, to Pecan, to Pecan Court, mm -hmm. it does flatten out quite a bit. So, you know, your, your sight distance is quite a bit further. Making a left turn for Pecan Court, you can see. Mm -hmm. Talking about on 62. Any other questions, comments? Does anyone else would like to comment? Hold it all, please. Mr. Shadle? Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Benberry? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Chair Cresilius? Aye. Mr. Bradford, I believe you have the next item of business. I move that this commission receive and file the application of Paducah Properties, LLC, and Walter and Carla Sorrells for the proposed re-subdivision of property located at 430 Adams Street and 508, 520, 522, and 526 South 5th Street. I further move that the requested approval be given in compliance with all other applicable provisions of the Paducah subdivision ordinance be waived. Second. Second by Shadow. Anything you need to say? Uh, do you have anything to ask? Well, I'm just looking for you for a comment. I'm You're sorry, I was kind of one. reviewing the drawing myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's happening here is uh, uh, the owners of Track C, uh, the Sorrels, are uh, going to convey uh, what's showing up as Track B uh, to the owner of Track A, Paducah Properties. And then we're also the Sorrels' own. Um, the small tract with the, the house on it uh, along 5th Street 
and we are um, abolishing an, an old lot line that is right next to the house, moving it over to where the new line is established, and then extending that across uh, the rear line, extending it across to, to hit that line. It's confusing. There's a notation here of an existing wooden fence. Is that going to stay, or will that be demolished in... I would uh, believe that's going to be demolished. I believe they plan on um, kind of making a uh, uh, maybe a pavilion or a gathering area for community meetings or picnics or, or whatever, back in the extra property in the back. So I would think that would be uh, be taken out. And will the shed say that's on track day? I'm not sure. Okay. I just wondered about the, I knew that you had said that they were probably going to expand the apartment complex. Is that part of the plan? That's not my, it's not my understanding they are. Um, I thought I read that. I thought I read that yeah. too. They may be. But. Yeah, and I do too. Yeah. Oh, that 3,513 square feet, that's lot area, not not building area. Okay. That makes a difference. Questions, comments? So from my understanding, this is just a preliminary abolishing the lines, and then after which will be a rendering made and proposal for some kind of structure to go in that area. Uh, the only structure I'm aware of is maybe a possible, some kind of covered pavilion, like a picnic area or whatever. This is just basically getting rid of some old lot lines and establishing some new ones. Now, there is going to be a conveyance from the soils to uh, Paducah Properties, but I mean, this will be the final action on the property lines. And there's no, any, any encroachments within setbacks and so forth that are currently there and not being altered in any way. We're not moving a line that I see closer to Right, we're actually helping. Track D is say. actually helping the situation. Right. Yes, you uh, are. You're, less you're creating a better situation as far as Track D is concerned. Yes. And we are dedicating the radius uh, at the intersection of Adams and, and Fifth Street. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the way I understood it. I just want to make sure that we weren't creating any other problems or better, bettering existing problems. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Mr. Shadle? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Mr. Benberry? Aye. Chair Cresilius? Aye. Mr. Benberry, I believe you have the last item of business. Yes. I move this commission receive and file the application of Ed Musselman for approval to waive 121 parking spaces at 3121 Broadway pursuant to section 126-71B2 of Paducah Zoning Ordinance. I further move that this commission find the waiver of the 121 parking stall shall have no negative impact on the property and the Coke plant is listed on the National Register of Historic Places and 55 parking places can be provided on site and Independence Bank located at 3143 Broadway has verbally agreed to allow the Coke plant to utilize their 57 parking spaces on nights and weekends and totally nearby street parking on LaBelle Avenue, Broadway and Jefferson Street is 61 vehicles and historic tax credits cannot be used to help rehabilitate the Coke plant if any original portion is demolished for parking. The Midtown area has undergone revitalization as a whole and the Coke plant is part and will help to further facilitate that revitalization. 
The coke plant is being rehabilitated, rehabilitated into a mixed-use building, and the coke plant is surrounded by residential neighborhoods where pedestrian activity can and will occur. The Paducah Commission Planning Commission has approval to waive the parking requirements at 3121 Broadway. I further move that the application be approved. Second. Second by Morrison. Do you have any comments? Certainly can if you prefer. Um, but I, I certainly appreciate you all uh, um, hearing this. And uh, um, it's been a long time coming for us. Um, certainly appreciate Independence Bank's role um, um, in creating the opportunity for us to reasonably apply for this waiver. Um, I have not prepared a formal presentation. Um, I've presented a, a letter um, to the Planning Commission, um, but I can field any questions that you have regarding the situation. You've been pretty thorough in your letter, and we do have that, Thank but you. in case there are any questions, it's always nice to have some. Please. I have one. Yes, ma'am. I'm not sure if it's to you or to Josh. Uh, the phrase, parking is requested to be waived for existing and future tenants. It bothered me a little bit. What that means is the dry ground brewing company is the only tenant that that's in in there now of course other tenants are coming where the space is broken down into the event space and the future restaurant and, and that sort of thing those are coming down the pike and those have in a, a calculated parking that goes with a sit-down restaurant or event space or something to that effect so that was all taken into account for our for our current um current one occupant that should open shortly uh, we have more than adequate parking already provided so a waiver wouldn't be necessary for the only current uh, where we've proposed um, based on occupancy of certain square footage on high occupancy low occupancy um, and and Josh has done the uh, the math to to put that put those numbers in front of you I just wanted to assure you my questions are not in any way taking away from what you're doing that's a wonderful project and mm -hmm. I think it's very really good and after Thank you very I read much. all of this I drove around over there and what it finally sunk into me it's a neighborhood i mean there is a lot of parking on there the is. side streets there and is. things like that so i was okay with that um i would like it better if the bank had given you a written agreement but i understand their their point of view yes, on that I, but uh they've, they've been very very gracious and and uh and so therefore i assume that the businesses that you're talking about are not going to be operating much daytime um, I don't believe um, the 57 parking spaces will be necessary during the daytime. So I believe that um, ultimately I feel that the parking that we're providing, uh, street side parking, um, really is reasonable. Um, during peak, peak hours of restaurant time, whenever people are on a wait, uh, events such as wedding receptions and what have you, I can see that being being the peak times and the bank would not be open during those hours. I was surprised at the number of parking spaces you're actually going to be able to provide in the building. I knew there were going to be parking spaces outside the building in the back where you tore down the addition that was not original to the building and certainly not necessary. <clears throat> but um, that was amazing to me that you were going to be able to provide indoor parking. It's been a, been a real nice Kind of a blessing in disguise, silver lining. It's 18,000, roughly 18,000 square foot uh, that we don't need to renovate. Um, so it's uh, it's helping solve a problem to where we can renovate the building from front all the way to back in one phase uh, without the additional cost and trying to figure out how to navigate that area. So it's really been it's just worked out perfectly. Um, the the warehouse space is natural. Uh, we don't have to do anything to it to make it indoor parking other than add some blowers for exhaust. Um, so for the restoration piece and for the you know historical accuracy, it keeps it consistent and then it helps to solve the problem that that uh, you know we don't want to we, we certainly don't want to burden the community. It's absolutely the opposite. We feel like filling the streets is going to make it desirable. We feel like it's going to make it feel community rather than you know a burden. If you're fully occupied, if you have an estimate that kind of gives a rough estimate of how many parking spaces are needed if you're fully occupied, um, say on a weekend, on a Saturday. Okay, that that actually that math was done by Mr. Summer. In, in, and so, so I, I apologize, but the the 
the equivalency, I can tell you we're looking at no more than a 5,000 square foot event space for high occupancy. We're looking at roughly four, four to 5,000 square foot high occupancy for restaurant. Um, and then uh, Dry Ground Brewing Company, we're going to be occupying roughly 3,500 square foot with a small portion of that being high occupancy for guests. And the remainder of the building, we're looking at retail and business use, a lot of low occupancy uses to push that down. So um, I answered <laughs> the questions to Mr. Summer um, in that manner, and he did the calculations. The uh, total is 176. That's for everything. Now, the event space by itself is 50, and we use the calculation that we use for hotels and motels for their ballrooms and event rooms that's the calculation that we have was one per 100 square feet of that and that's how that 50 was come up with i too i had a had a concern like commissioner shrampke about the uh, parking over at independence bank and concern about the verbal commitment um what if that parking uh for some reason becomes not available What's that going to do? Um, I'm just. Uh, I believe the only my, my personal feeling in the conversations with Mr. Evitz, um, the only way that that's going to become unavailable is due to poor action on my part. Um, I don't. I don't believe that there's any intent to to ever do that. Uh, I, I completely understand they don't want an expressed um, easement, written or otherwise. And again, that I believe that's for. 30, 40, 50 years down the road, um, they don't want to have an encumbered property, and I completely understand. So um, as far as immediate impact, I don't believe that there's going to be any, any concerns there. We plan to, to make sure that the property's as clean uh, Monday morning as it was uh, Friday afternoon, and we'll, we'll honor that neighborly agreement that they've, they've made to us. I had a question about the, the street, and this might be beyond what you're looking at but i thought i read in here somewhere that some of those parking spaces are no longer clearly marked uh, almost they haven't been used almost or, none of them are will they be and maybe this goes beyond our discussion here but will they be marked and um that hasn't been looked into at this time typically on street parking is against the curb where you're not supposed to park usually the curb is actually painted yellow right um but at this point we really haven't looked into that yes sure well, that's a good problem to have, isn't it? Yes. It would be, yes. <laughs> I think that there's parts, if you drive down uh, if you drive down Broadway, if you look, um, there's a turning lane on the side closest to Coke, the Coke plant, um, on the side closest to Broadway City Pub, the Star. Um, it's the same width, and there is no, there, there's no turning lane. Um, so, I mean, you're only talking a couple of spots here and there, but it's things that we don't even, we don't even look at, and it's something that me as a, a passing citizen i certainly wouldn't um, but really trying to scrutinize the issue for this this matter uh, there's parking a lot of places that we just don't use jefferson it, street is if it was something like a big wedding reception something like that people would find a, they would find the off street parking if everything else was full that's our belief ma'am and, and for a large event i i certainly staffing uh, a valet of, of sorts if, mm -hmm. if there's something we need to address we we can operationally address those on one-off situations there have been other events in that neighborhood where they've done shuttle service from mm -hmm. first baptist church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's always an option right? sure mm. any other questions comments call the roll please mr benberry aye Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Mr. Shadle? Aye. Mr. Wade? Abstain. Chair Crusius? Aye. I think it's important for people to know why Mr. Wade abstained. He's an employee of Independence Bank, and so he, as such, he can't vote on this particular issue. Is there any other business to come before us tonight? Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. If there's no other business, we stand adjourned. Thank you.